Yo, what's going on, bro? Once again, people, you man, a rose woman, fanboys, and fangirls, and as always, the tacos and Nikki out there is Mr. Nintendo Sony Free 2011, aka Mini Wolverine. Of course, you guys are interested in intros and outros and towards this channel. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all the other good stuff. Before I do begin, there's about three things I want to talk about really quick, probably less than a minute, so we'll probably skip to the fourth minute or the fifth minute duration point uh, when I start getting to this Pokemon Detective Pikachu shit about. How the main writer, not only last week did I talk about him possibly wanting to do like a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate movie, but he also wants to do a single solo movie about Jigglypuff, and that's it. Which I don't think that would really go that well. I think that movie premises would be real weak if it was only about Jigglypuff. I get it. It has a real big fan base when it comes to Smash Bros. Ultimate because, you know, Jigglypuff's a fighter in that game, and it comes from one of the most popular, like, top five, top ten video gaming franchises in the world, but I don't think a solo Jigglypuff movie would do that good. Plus, it did say in 2021, 2022, I think 2023 and a couple of years from now, Lionsgate and Warner, not Lionsgate, um, Legendary Pictures, and I think Warner Brothers did say they might end up doing a Pokemon uh, Red and Blue live action movie. I would much rather see that than see um, a Jigglypuff movie. They did this They'll probably should just make an animation or like maybe a little, I don't know, a Netflix mini series thing or something about Jigglypuff having its own movie. I can see maybe Netflix or Hulu doing it, but like a billion dollar like industry like Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures, I don't know. It might not do that well, but actually I want to talk about three things. Um, Finally, after four and a half months of me saying this, I've been putting this anime on the back burner for the longest fucking time, but... Just the other night, I, I got through like the first four episodes of this anime called um, The Promised Neverland. And um, I gotta say, it's really fucking good. I love it a lot, man. I truly am really, really liking this anime. And um, I don't know what it is, but this dude right here reminds me a lot of like how Sasuke and like one of um, Ichigo's friends from the Bleach and the Naruto series I act. He's like, that pretty depressing emo goth scene sort of dude that just doesn't give a shit about whatever people think. He just he wants just to be the cool bad boy and shit like that. And then this right here, um, I honestly don't know if I should be happy about this or I should fanboy about it or I should be cool with it or I'd be upset about this because um, I remember last year hearing about this because you know I'm not a I I always wanted to be like a comic sort of channel but. I usually don't talk about that sort of stuff here. I kind of wish I could, but I don't know. Maybe if I had a separate channel, I probably would do that. But it is what it is. Um, since um Ben Affleck, I don't think he. I'm not sure if he's still going to be Batman for Justice League Two, or if it's going to be this dude right here, Sir Robert Pattinson, being the next Batman. And um, to be honest, the only two other movies I've ever seen him in, besides all the Twilight movies he was in, I think it was either Harry Potter. Prisoner of Eskimen or Harry Potter Goblet of Fire is one of those two he was in. It was a lot more of a younger Rob Pattinson at the time. And then he was like in this elephant, like things called Water for Elephants. I think it was a movie that he was in with Reese Witherspoon. And I think it was like a circus ringleader or something like that. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. His acting, I'm not going to lie. His acting is very, very fucking good. I'll admit it. This guy, he really knows how to act super professionally, but. As far as him being Batman, uh, I'm honestly not too sure about that. And he's probably going to have to work out like a motherfucker in the gym because he's always been like a really skinny, frail sort of looking dude. He doesn't really have a lot of like muscle on him. So he's probably going to have to bust his ass in the gym a whole bunch if he's going to be playing the role of Batman. Because as most of you know, Batman's extremely, his physical physique is extremely muscular and it's really powerful and shit. And Rob Pattinson doesn't have that body, so he's really going to have to get a lot of professional trainers to, like, train him to be extremely as big and muscular as he can because he's always been a real skinny, frail dude. If it would have been maybe the other dude that played Jacob from Twilight, the one that was real buff, that Native American Mexican-looking dude, I forgot what his fucking name was, but, um, damn. I don't remember what his name was, but I remember he was Jacob in the movie. If he would have been Batman, I could see that happening, but... I don't know if the world's, you know, really ready for, like, 
either a new black African-American Batman or Hispanic Latino Batman instead of like the traditional white Batman. I don't know. I mean, that'd be cool, but that would be pretty um, historical. I'm not trying to sound like a fucking SJW or any of that third wave feminist garbage shit, but hey, that'd be pretty um, groundbreaking for sure. So, um, I don't know. I, I feel like he might do a good job as Batman, but as far as his physique, he's really going to have to work hard as fuck on that, man. And where he... Not Heath Ledger. Christian Bale, he did really good as Batman. And I remember, like, Michael Keaton back in the day, he did all right. George Clooney, he was okay, but I never really liked him as an actor. There's just something about him. I always came off the wrong way. I don't know why. I think because he works for the FBI and CIA, and besides being a Hollywood actor. I think that's the reason I never liked him. Anyways... This shit right here, ho, ho, ho. I saw it had about 22,000 dislikes and 17,000 likes. When I saw the Batwoman trailer, oh, God. One of the most nastiest, disgusting pieces of fucking garbage shithole trailers I've seen. I mean, people thought Captain Marvel and the Ghostbusters movie was super feministic and super SJW shit. This is probably going to be the worst, worse than that. People are even saying this is even worse than the Sonic trailer was, which I can 110% agree with that. You know, that shit was an abomination too, but luckily they're fixing that. Hoping to God he looks like his video game counterpart this November. But everyone was giving all these jokes and memes about, oh my God, is James Charles going to be on like a Batwoman now? If she, I had no idea who the fuck James Charles was until about two months ago. I think he's like some gay LGBTQ um, beauty guru or something. I really don't give a shit because, number one, I'm not gay. Number two, I don't give a fuck about makeup because I'm a guy. I don't wear that shit. <laughs> if I was a woman, that'd be a whole other different thing, but I'm a man. So thank God I am, too. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, if I was a woman, I probably would end up being a lesbian. <laughs> Anyways, um, no offense to anyone LGBTQ, I'm just saying. Yeah, this thing was complete fucking shit. It was really bad. Absolutely disgusting. I don't know if CW and Warner Brothers wants to run the Batwoman franchise to the ground, but they're running it to the ground, and it's not looking good, man. But anyways, let's get into this thing right here. I'm probably not going to be able to do both of these articles since I spent like seven and a half minutes talking about this shit, but yeah, Detective Pikachu writer is writing a Star is Born movie with Jigglypuff. When the writers for Detective Pikachu are not currently working on any spinoffs and the well-received for the well-received Pokemon film, they did offer stellar idea for a Jigglypuff movie that may be inspired by A Star is Born. When Oren Azuni tapped <clears throat> to write the sequel with Dan Hernandez and Benji Samit, writing a duo, duo as free, freed up to make such an idea into reality, maybe. Jigglypuff may not have had a very much time to shine in Detective Pikachu, but that doesn't mean that it was one of the writer's favorite Pokemon and Iconics in its own right. In fact, one of the most memorable characteristics, singing peep, singing to people in the sleep, made its way into a slight sight gag on the big screen. That said, Jigglypuff isn't isn't content with sleep with a, a sleeping audience, and the screenwriters have a much more bigger dream of its in its mind for the beloved balloon Pokemon. Overall thoughts, views, and opinions. I said before. I said it before. I'll say it again. This video, this video, this movie probably won't be that good. It was probably going to be good if it was like a Netflix or a Hulu series, maybe, or maybe even like a full, like I don't know, thirty-minute, half-hour little anime thing from the Pokemon anime. I can see that happening, but not as a full-fledged movie. That would probably be a bad idea. And unfortunately, I gotta get a little bit more fucked up, depressing news, and this is coming from probably one of the most communist and um, biggest fucking Illuminati, New World Order, Rockefeller, Russia, mind control fucking countries in the world. I know I can't gotta put my oh tinfoil hat. This is not real. It is 100% fucking real. There is evil organizations that do control this world. Unfortunately, if you don't believe me, that's tough shit. You can still be asleep if you want. For me, I believe that shit 110%. Even though I do participate in watching movies and playing video games, I probably have a lot of subliminal messages like that, but I give a green card excuse for that, so it's okay. So it says, China fully bans a depiction of blood, use of the word kill in video games. And there's another article here you can read in the description box below. So there's that. This is niche culture in a college. Okay, I don't have to read that part. 
This comes from Ryan Pearson, good credit, credit is due, and to the other person that made the article today as well. The Chinese government has introduced new laws banning what could, what can be depicted in video games sold within the country. And it makes it more fucked up. Just last week, Saturday, I think it was a Sunday, um, Mr. Fagel Trump himself, a.k.a. the President of the United States, or Donald Trump, as some people call him, but I like to call him Dracula Trump or Fagel Trump because uh, that's what he is doing. Just pure fucking faggot. But anyways, <laughs> once again, no offense to LGBTQ. I don't mean it to you guys. It's just the guy's a fucking stupid piece of shit. And he really hates people like me too, Hispanic, so um, fuck him. Anyways, <laughs> the Chinese government has introduced new laws. I already read that. Previously, any depiction of blood, gore, and dismemberment of human body parts were banned. In addition, skeletons and zombies were also banned and is considered dishonoring the dead and ancestors. These have been worked around the past by changing the color of blood, something other than red, and reworking skeletons and zombies into other kinds of monsters. Now the ban has much, been much more stricter, and a new, new report via Gematsura, Gematsura notes that the country is banning anything that can perceive blood, perceive as blood. In addition to this, to this, the word "kill" cannot be used in the game in any way from from the title in the game text. Chinese Chinese tech giant Tencent Games have already adapted to this new law in a at least one title where they have handled the distribution of player no battlegrounds oh i heard about this shit yesterday mobile in china and the game has been now renamed get this game for peace <laughs> wow i'm telling you if any people are in china or watching this on youtube i don't know why the hell you don't speak against your government man you got one of the most dictator dictatorial ships fucking communist places in the world. I'm telling you, your government's fucking you every day, man. You think North Korea and Cuba and Venezuela's bad or Russia? Pfft. You guys over there in China got to start stepping your rights for freedom, man, because you guys are way more bigger slaves over there than we are here in the United States. I mean, I'm not saying America's the most greatest place in the world to live, but, you know, there's a few times where it does feel like it's police state and you still kind of feel like spiritually and mentally you still feel like you're a slave. Physically, you're free, but mentally and spiritually, you still feel like you're a little bit of a slave to the government in a way. Even though it's not communist out here, but eventually it will come to the point where um, a lot of our freedoms are going to get taken away. We're kind of already having that with the whole gun rights and all that shit and with all this SJW shit with the whole Me Too garbage. You know, it's sad, but that's just how it is nowadays, unfortunately. Let's move on. In addition to the game's death, animations have now been replaced with characters placing the items that they were carrying onto the ground and then waving goodbye before vanishing. One Twitter user commented that it was hilariously wholesome. The Chinese government had began approving games for sale and after a month's long hiatus, the Ministry of Education has given recommendations to eight other regulatory bodies asking for less approvals of video games. These were in efforts to combat myphonia and so-called video game addiction. I have no idea what the fuck myphonia even means. The new idea, or excuse me, new law has gone into effect immediately and applies to the games that have already been given a license to sell in mainland China. Once again, overall thoughts, views, and opinions, you Chinese people out there, I feel very, very fucking bad for you, man. Luckily, at least Japan doesn't have to deal with this shit, but if they see, oh, they see anything with drug references, or if they see anything with um that, or um spiritual ghost things, or anything like that, that's considered extremely offensive out there. Or anything like a yokai's and all that shit. But yokai watch is pretty big for some reason. I don't know. It is what it is. Um, Every country has their own little trigger points. And every country has their own little fucking problems to deal with. It just says what it is. But thank God I don't live out there. Because um, it's got to be like be, feel like living as a robot slave when you're living in China. No offense to anyone that lives over there. That's all I got to say for now and I'm done here. Links in the description box down below. Cartel on the side and I'm out. Peace out once again, ladies and gentlemen, bros, women, fanboys, and fangirls, and as always, I'll talk as Nikki Kamoni's out there. I'll see you when I see you guys. Good day, have a good night, wherever you're at in the world out there. Stay tuned for future um, video game industry news, anime manga news, internet news, and that's it. Take it easy. Peace out, Molly. Shower crowd. Late to goodbye. I'll see you people on the flip side. Later.